Hey everyone, I wanted to make a guide on how to replace your internal SD card on, well this is a Pioneer AVH4400 NEX model. You can see this is the issue that I'm having. It shows the software error, please contact your Pioneer dealer, and it actually was going into a big boot loop where it would show the Pioneer logo, it would show a big fuzzy screen, then it would shut off, then try to boot up again. It would keep doing that over and over and over, then eventually just shut off. Now, I was able to find this replacement SD card. You can see right here is the old one that I took out. The replacement, I think, came from Russia. Either way, it's some eBay seller. I'll put a link down in the description for that. I think I've seen the prices fluctuate from $40 to $80, depending on how that seller is feeling that particular day. Um, but anyway, let's get into the disassembly. I'll show you how to replace this. This is an internal SD card. It's not one that you can replace while the unit is in the vehicle. So you do need to remove it from the vehicle. But once you have it out, you can see that I have it here. Uh, I'm going to make a mistake here and remove all eight of the screws on top when I shouldn't have. Right now I'm actually taking off the uh, mounting bracket for my GM van on the side, taking off the adapter. And what I should have started with, there's actually two more screws on the left and right side of the unit that need to come off. And then should be able to pop off the uh, black plastic on the front. I took the screen off there. And this is where I make a mistake. Uh, when it comes time to take out the top screws, you really only need to remove the four outermost screws because the uh, four inside screws there are actually what hold the CD player up to the frame of the unit. So, yeah, learn from my mistakes on that. And you can see, as far as popping it off, just uh, poke it with a screwdriver. It has a couple plastic clips. And inside, there's your CD player at the top. Again, that probably should have stayed connected to the top plate that I removed. And underneath, there is a ribbon cable that you need to remove. Remove it from the CD player and leave it attached to the motherboard down below. For that, it's just two little plastic tabs on the left and right side of the ribbon cable underneath. And just uh, you can usually get under them with your fingernail and pull them back. I'll show it a little closer right there. Both sides have that little tab. So pull it up and pull the cable out. Now here, I'm uh, pulling out the entire slide mechanism for the screen. It's, uh, I don't really know an easy way to do this besides just prying on it with a screwdriver, some pliers. Be careful not to bend it. These little uh, pliers worked good. I'm able to slide it all the way out like that. And there's two screws at the hinge points on it down below that hold the thing to the metal frame, I guess you'd say, to the slider. Take both of those screws out, then kind of pry those metal arms off to the side, and then the black part will come free. So there's the right side, there's the left side, that's out. And now it swivels up and down, so just swivel one side higher than the other, like that, and it'll come right out. Now don't pull it because it's still on the ribbon cable back behind. It's connected to the motherboard. Be careful not to damage that ribbon cable or you will have to replace a lot. <laughs> so uh, set that down. And here's where I should have started before even taking the top off is taking off this black piece of plastic. It's just clipped in aside from two screws on the left and right side. You can see me kind of pushing the tabs in. If you look at yours, you'll see all the little snap tabs that hold it in. Pulling that off, and then down on the bottom there's another one that needs to be wiggled off. I'm taking out the ribbon cable now. This one I believe flips up just like that. It's a little black thing that flips up towards the back of the unit. And then you can pull the ribbon cable out through the front, take that piece off. And there's the last snap down at the bottom for that plate there. Slide that off. And now you can see both of your SD card slots. It has the uh, one for your media on the top. That one on the bottom is the one that houses the firmware that you're going to replace. So take it out, pop your new one in, click it in. You can see it right there. It's the bottom one for your firmware. And time to reassemble. So reassembly, basically opposite of disassembly, of course. Slide on your black plate again. Feed your ribbon cable through. Put it down into the port, 
and then snap it back in just the opposite of how you took it out and now I'm just kind of going back and putting my CD player back onto the top plate which I shouldn't have taken off in the first place it's uh, the four innermost screws that hold the CD player onto that top plate I'll just speed this up real quick so that's back on get that out of the way And back to the radio here. Now that's the ribbon cable for the CD player. You get a pretty good view right here. Slide it in, and then you push those two tabs on the left and right side back down onto it. And go back one more time, make sure that's really on tight. Now you can set that down into the top of the unit. Now make sure that you don't snap on that black plate on the front yet, because you want to. Uh, you really want to do that last. So put on this top plate first, all four screws on the side there and four and now go ahead and push in that front black plastic piece snap it in all the way around keep snapping it in then you can kind of see where the two screws would go on the side there's one here that i'm going to put back in and again this is really where you should have started is take off this black plastic plate i really hope i'm helping someone out there by uh, learning from my mistakes on this so that's screwed in now Go ahead and slide the mechanism back in. That's all set. Put your faceplate back on. And you're largely done with it. I'm putting back on my GM adapter for my van here. Yours may be different, but they all pretty much mount the same. It's just a couple of screws into the side of it, depending on what vehicle it's been retrofitted into. Just have a couple screws on each side. It's simple enough. It's nothing too crazy. And that's it. You can see new firmware. It's working fine. Everything's as it should be. I don't know why I waited so long to do this. So that's it. I hope this video helps you out. It might apply to other radios as well, but this is specifically the Pioneer AVH4400 NEX. And this is the replacement of the internal SD card and uh, fixing the firmware. Thanks for watching.